Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to our home renovation addition remodel project thing. Finally, the weather has turned to something uh, tolerable. It's starting to warm up, not super warm today, but at least the sun is shining, which is uh, super nice. So we're back outside actually getting things done after almost an entire month of dealing with weather delays and issues. It's late, uh, well, it's the last week of April already, which is crazy. So this should be a pretty exciting and packed episode. We have the main thing today, our membrane roof is going to be going on. So we'll be talking to Scott up there who's doing that install. Uh, Donovan and I are down here installing the window well for the egress window for the basement. And then Mike is inside switching our hot water over from our old tank heater to the new indirect uh, water heater thing. So fun packed day. So yesterday was kind of a uh, prep and get started day. So Donovan and I uh, went out and picked up the landscape block got most of the first course laid in and started stacking up this corner. Uh, I'm pretty excited about having this in place because once the egress window well is in place, we can finally do our final backfill and get rid of the big pile of dirt, which is over uh, behind me. So that'd be nice. And there won't be a big hole to keep falling into. Uh, up top here on the, uh, the roof deck, Scott did all the prep work yesterday so that today he just has a little bit of clip work to do and they can start the install. So that's going to be pretty cool to see. Up there we are doing a product called Duradec. So it is a vinyl membrane. This is a sample of what it looks like. It's a heavy thick vinyl. It's also texturized so you can uh, you know not slip and fall. The uh, advantage of doing something like this versus a traditional membrane is that this is a walkable membrane so you can actually like, walk on it and it doesn't need to be protected. If you do, whoop. <laughs> so in our case, if you do a traditional membrane, we'd probably have to put a deck on top of it. So you're talking about putting down membrane first and then building a floating deck on top of that. So we like the option of having it all in one thing. That way we have a nice, really nice, like finished look out there without having another, another deck. <laughs> These of course come in a whole variety of different patterns and colors and whatnot is all kinds of different designs. We went with uh, this kind of forest floor leaf print kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that looks in a bigger piece than just this. Making, we're making pretty good progress on our baby retaining wall is what we're going to call it because that's basically what this is. Although it's, so if you haven't seen how these go together before, they have, they're just blocks. They got a little, a little finger thing on the back there that interlocks and kind of catches on the back of the previous course, which is great. But when you're making a cavity, it's supposed to be a certain size. Every single course, the opening gets an inch, an inch, bigger. An inch bigger and we have two side walls. So this way it's getting two inches bigger every course. This one's getting an inch bigger. So we're getting creative with the cutting and layout as we go. So we can overlap the corners. So yes, yeah, so we get a nice overlap on the corners because you want that to actually lock together. Otherwise, if this was just a retaining wall somewhere, not nearly as big a deal if it's an inch this way or that way. <laughs> but we're trying to get this to line up with our trim board, our casing, which is gonna be beside the window here. Because, you know, Mr. Say your phrase. I don't want to say it. I, don't want to say I it refuse tomorrow. to say it. It's all trim. <laughs> so a little, a little more accuracy required here than, than normal, I would say. But we got uh, one pallet all cleared off, so I'm gonna go grab the uh, the other pallet and uh, keep going. Basically, once you get that first course laid in down there, which is what we did yesterday, you, just, you gotta take a little time in the corners, but the, the middle is just like stack and, stack and, and go. Roll. Yeah. Five. Do we have a five? 
five and a half. Seven. Eight. Five and a quarter. All right, Dom's gonna have a cookie. Let's go see how Scott's doing up here. Oh, look at this. We got an actual roof going on here. We're making progress. This is this is exciting. I don't. I've been waiting so long for this uh, this moment to have something up here that's not full of holes. <laughs> something that's gonna keep the water out of your house. <laughs> so Scott, can you walk us through kind of what happened yesterday with your prep work? Sure. So what we've got here is our carpenter has given us a nice slope that drains to two different scuppers that we're going to have. So yesterday what I did was belt sanded the entire subfloor <laughs> and made sure to catch any screw heads, take out any high spots. Uh, I tend to be pretty fussy. We like it to be nice and smooth and consistent. So once we got all the skim coat taken care of, you're pretty much ready to lay your Duradac. Yeah, so you, you got some kind of basically filler or skim coating here to get all the seams nice and even and level Correct. and nice yep, and flat yep, so yeah. that your it's membrane... A, it's a cement based filler that we use that was the same type of skim that you'd use on a kitchen vinyl. Okay, all right, so sure. It's the, basically the same type of prep that you would use on an indoor floor. Okay. But you just try to bring it outside and, and turn it into a, a nice living space. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we glue, it's a contact adhesive. We glue the plywood and then we glue the back of the vinyl. And once it's dry to the touch, then we gently just kind of roll it into itself, trying to eliminate any buckles, and you definitely don't want any air bubbles. Is that difficult to do with the different uh, pitches and valleys in here? It is a little bit challenging, but you just kind of go with, you know, you got to have drainage of some kind. Sure. You know, water doesn't lie and it won't go uphill. So you always make sure everything flows to where you need it to go. Um, but all in all, you know, this is going to be a great space. This is a nice way to add square footage to the house. You know, you can uh, get some patio furniture up here and enjoy yourself. The sun is on this deck most of the day, I noticed, so that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. So what we do here is we kind of tuck it into the corner so that it's nice and tight to make sure that there's no air pockets behind there so that somebody can kick it and cause a puncture. And then once we get it tight in the corners, we take our handy little penny roller here, give that a nice extra roll all the way down. Then we take our spreader and make sure to smooth out any possible air bubbles. And you're completely wrapping the parapet. Yes, that tends to keep it the most watertight. I know our carpenter talked about cap, putting a metal cap over the top of the parapet mm -hmm. wall, which is a good idea. But generally speaking, I like to put the Duradec over because that way you know you're watertight. So we just force it in here, keep everything nice and tight. And then we'll come along with the heat gun later on 
and weld this seam to make it completely watertight. It's definitely not rocket science, but it's physical work. It's definitely something that you uh, you don't want to do on an empty stomach. You're going to get your breakfast, <laughs> eat your Wheaties, do the best you can. Uh, the other thing we've noticed is you can't control the weather. We've uh, got some sunshine out here today, so it's really nice. Um, generally speaking, we like to have it a minimum of 40 degrees so that everything sticks the best. Yeah. So as you can see, we just kind of generally go through, smooth everything out, make sure that you get good contact everywhere and that you don't have any air pockets. And again, once we get up here to the wall, we like to make sure that the corners are nice and tight. We'll hit it again with the roller here. And then we smooth everything straight up so that there's no air pockets or wrinkles or anything on the wall too. Generally speaking, most of this stuff gets covered up with the siding that goes back on, mm -hmm. but you like to make sure that it's watertight as best as you can. Okay, so we've got this half down. We'll go ahead and flip this other half back That's very and do the same thing. To do only half at once. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, the... I, I saw that immediately, I'm like, That's, this guy is... He's done this a few times. <laughs> yeah, practice, practice, <laughs> practice. It's just like any other trade skill. The more you do, the better you get. So this is just going to be a line. Let yeah. us know where to stop with our adhesive. Okay, now we can flip it back. And spreading this glue is just like anything else. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> just the right amount. It can be messy if you're getting wild with it. And uh, it, it's an alcohol-based glue, so it's difficult to remove too. Oh, sure. Our glues stick wonderfully to this natural lumber too. You get a good tight bond. That's what you want. So the same exact thing as normal contact cement. You let it tack up for yep, a little exactly. bit and then it's very similar to like you use for making laminate countertops or any other contact cement, yes. That's the extent of the lamination things that I've had experience with. Right, yep. And yeah, you know, you, you touch the two together at the wrong time and you're like, yeah, okay. That's right. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, the wind can be a challenge as well. If you get a piece of vinyl like oh, this sure. and the wind gets a hold of it and flops it over, uh, you may be buying a new piece of vinyl. <laughs> No, so no, no issues with pressure washing then? Nope, that's correct. Yep. You, <laughs> you don't want to use the, the super fine pin style right. nozzle tip? Blow a hole in it. <laughs> and if you're ambitious and want to be out here in the winter time, you can shovel this with a plastic shovel as well. I've been shoveling this roof deck all winter already. Well, see, so you, you know, got to practice. keep all the snow off of our tarp. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> The manufacturer gives us a 25 year wear and tear warranty, which means that it resists any UV fading from sunlight or anything like that. One of the other big challenges is trying not to make sure to step into glue. <laughs> that, that could be a challenge. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't ever happen. Oh. <laughs> But you do your best. Another thing you learn. The other thing I've learned over the years with experience is you got to work fast. You can't just kind of stand around and you really got to be on top of this glue because it'll dry pretty quickly on the surface of the plywood and then you've got a mess. Oh, sure. So normally we go up the wall about six inches, but since we're going to have a patio door going here for future, yep. we want to run this up the wall a little bit higher. We'll go ahead and tuck this in behind the siding that's existing.
And then we'll run staples across the top here to make sure that the mechanical fasteners will keep it tight. Keep the corners from tinting. I'm really looking forward to seeing this crazy corner you created it go in. <laughs> That's definitely a custom job. <laughs> I was watching you prep, I'm like, oh yeah, he's got a plan. I guess I would recommend we'll just pull all this off and just let it flop let it down. back down just in case it rains. But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty well taken care of there in the corner. Finish up this wall here and I think that'll do it for today. Exciting, exciting. All right, Scott got pretty far on the install today. Uh, I think tomorrow they'll be back to finish up a few of the last little details, weld all the seams and finish up all of the corners and make them all nice and pretty but I'm so excited to finally have some kind of surface out here and uh, <laughs> I'm just overjoyed. These are the scuppers, the water collection bins which they will install. So those are gonna go, one's gonna go right there, that's that small one and then this big one, this big old guy right here, that is gonna go right over here and go into our downsprouts, into our water evacuation system. <laughs> anyway, just really a good, super duper day today. And this has been a long time coming. I am just so thrilled that it's finally, finally happening. Or has happened, partially has happened. All right, so everybody's favorite plumber, Mike is back. We're gonna switch over the water heater, which is super yeah. exciting. So this one's finally gonna Get the heck out of here. <laughs> so Mike already cut the lines off the heater. So we got the cold water coming in and then the hot water coming out. And now we're just gonna plumb it into the, what are we call that? Heater box? Uh, the indirect. The indirect heater in box? The indirect water heater, <laughs> yes. Yep, the indirect box, indirect water heater. <laughs> That all works. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at making up words. So that's, that's good. <laughs> so these two uh, lines here, these two black lines here, these are the ones coming off of the indirect heater box thing. <laughs> the hot and cold. Yep. The hot and cold coming off of there. So he's going to feed in the cold water from the, the well, which actually the well is in the other room, back into here, and go back into the other room again. Another reason we're <clears throat> attaching here is because uh, this is the soft water. That is true. Uh, yeah, so this, the water softener is in here as well. So the water comes in, and the other room behind this wall, it comes, this is the cold water from the well, comes over here, does some stuff, hops into here, and then goes over to the uh, old water heater. So we're just basically extending this area here, and then we'll, in the future, when we get rid of this and all of that, make it a little bit nicer. I think it's nice already. Oh, you like the rat nest of pipes everywhere? Oh. Keeps you guessing? That's that's how I that's what I think about when I sleep. <laughs> pipes everywhere. <laughs> uh, I don't count teeth, I count pipes. <laughs>
that is that. You're like, you're like a pipe wizard. Yeah, I don't know about a wizard. <laughs> Water back on. Now the fun part is to go stand and make sure that make sure the leak leaks. Is that all water heaters come with insulation? And they show it as that they want insulation on the hot and cold coming out of the water heater, which is fine when you're dealing with an electric or a power vent. But when you're dealing with an atmosphere, which is metal vented, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you where I found this, which was right here, which is fine, trying to capture. It was spun a little different direction. But when you take them off and they're that close to number one, you're that close to the vent on the water heater and that you're this close to the vent on the furnace, this is what you'll find. Those are burns. Oh, a little hot. A little hot. Now, I don't know miraculously how these things don't just light up in flames, <laughs> but they seem to all melt like this. Whether this is there or not, this metal pipe here this close, you're supposed to have, when you use a single wall venting, um, six to nine inches. Oh, that far, then you can't even. Distance. Okay. So this should have actually been like way up there, way up here to get away from that. So, um, some may say six, some say nine. If you actually look on the, right here, you can see where that has melted. Oh yeah. It's like fused to the, yep, to the to vent the pipe. Yeah. So, and that was this spot. <laughs> with a hole in it now. Right here. <laughs> so, uh, word to the wise for people that put these in, that want to do their own water heaters, more power to you. Six to nine inches above the <laughs> vent or away from the vent, or it starts to become a fire hazard. All right, so with the, uh, the new lines connected, it's time to see if this thing turns on. And we should probably put a little water in. <laughs> Give them some of the heat. Check for leaks here to make sure everything looks good. What we're going to do is open a, a faucet in the laundry tub to make sure we get all the air out of the tank. So it'll just know that it has a hot water tank? Now it'll know when I plug it back in, it'll register that there's a hot water tank on here. So this, uh, this one here is for the heating zones. For, for all the in-floor, which will be at, that one's set at uh, one temperature, 135-ish. Uh -huh. um, and so then when we do the toe kick, which needs to have 180 degree, that thermostat will get tied into here. Oh. And then when this, when, there, when the toe kick, there'll be a separate pump for that. And when the toe kick kicks on, mm -hmm. then um, it will shut the main system pump down so the discontinue heating the floor and then so that's how it knows different temperatures so different yeah. temperatures okay yep. so uh, once we get that installed that's what this uh, that's what this one is for um, and then we also have one for um, there's one for an outdoor sensor um, I think it's the outdoor sensor I'm almost positive that's what that is so there's an outdoor sensor that uh, that we have that would we haven't installed yet because the siding is still being done mm -hmm. Uh, we'll get a wire up, run up to that, and then a wire run into here um, for the uh, for the outdoor sensor, so that in the summer you can't turn the heat on if it's Which makes 68 sense. degrees outside. Because you, you wouldn't want it on anyway. Yeah, it's going to say, "Hey, dummy, it's 68 outside. Don't." No. You'll need heat. You don't need need heat. So what we're doing is it's fired up. It's trying to heat the water, and because we haven't used this coil, it's now pumping through the coil, and mm -hmm. the coil is now pushing air back at the boiler. And so what we're doing is this particular boiler has a perch. Oh, right, um, right on there. Right on here, which is tied in with the condensate line, which is that gray line coming down. Yep. And then we, we made it, pointed it in the direction of the floor drain. Floor drain. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is get the air to purge out. More air. More air. Yeah, I think you sold this well because you said we're going to have it take off because it sounds like it's about to blast the hell out of here. When? Right now. Oh, well. All this air purging. <laughs> it's a very violent sound. 
I guess we're ready for takeoff. Well, it, it might. We gotta. <laughs> The, uh, the hot water is now coming out of this thing, which is pretty exciting. So Mike was just telling me this off camera here, but so the water temp in here is set to 140. Which 140 I'm, in the tank. I'm assuming that's what this is telling me here. Yep, that's what the target <laughs> temperature is, yep. So the tank is maintaining 140, a holding temperature. Yes. And then as it comes out, it has an actual mixing valve on the bottom here, this green one. So it's gonna dump some coal into it and set it to 120 or whatever we have it set to. 120 is the max you can set it to. Um, you can turn it down from there. Right, so, so this green knob here is the adjustment for what the uh, the output of the, yes. the hot water is gonna be yep. into the house. Yep. So that's this is exciting. It's on. It blasts it off. Yep. It's right <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's gonna be nice to get everything in here and a little more consolidated. I, uh, this room already is, uh, is, is a lot better than it was. Yeah, it was. So <laughs> now you've taken what was your boiler on the one side of the room and uh, got that over here, and then your water heater, which is across the, the way, and put that here. So this is uh, pretty much All right soaking here. up spaces that you can use for other things now. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, thanks for showing us everything, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So our window well is done for now, at least. We have one more course of block to install, but we bought all the block that the landscape supply had. So we're waiting for uh, a few more to come in. So today, just to kind of keep moving and doing things, now that the, the roof is mostly watertight, we're gonna put these windows in here so that our current kitchen is less of a dungeon. Because <laughs> someone, you know, put a bunch of OSB over the kitchen windows and it's very dark in there. Very dark. <laughs> What's for lunch? Uh, roller. I'll have two rollers. Decide if I don't give it. <laughs> the usual? Yeah, the usual. <laughs> bottom out for now and we'll go in with the top first to get our flanges. Close. A little out. Which way? Um tip up. This top needs to move away or the bottom can go that way. That's good right there, whatever you're doing. Right there? That's pretty good. All right, let's put one in each corner. 
The bottom two then, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Sides? Yep, I got the side and the top. I got the bottom flange out too. Okay. That's a lot better. Good. Yeah, you might be just a hair high. That's good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say that side's got to come down, if anything. Really? Uh, yeah, up a hair. That's pretty close right there. Oh. That's closer. That's better. Yeah, that's a lot better up here. So we decided to switch to using uh, screws for the windows because uh, one errant blow of a hammer <laughs> and you gotta get a replacement window or you get it repaired. Which, these windows aren't particularly expensive. I thought they were pretty reasonably priced. I think the big ones were like $800, but you'll see us install in the future. So it's not that crazy. The ones in the great room were 1200. The problem is the lead times. And those lead times have only gone up since we got these windows. So now they're like 30 something weeks out. So for us to get another window, it might not be here by winter. So we can't really risk <laughs> anything for damaging. And the nice other nice thing about the screws is if we need to adjust the fit. It's easy to do because it gets back the screws out versus trying to pull all those nails. And when we have so many windows that are going to be set to each other perfectly, uh, there's probably a high chance that something will need to be removed and shifted a little bit. So that's why we're using screws this time. All right, so now we're hopping over to these windows. A little unfortunate thing that we realized, which just kind of screwed us up on that last pair, was that all of our windows are slightly out of square. <laughs> but at least now that we know that, we can make the adjustments. So we're shimming each window as they're going into place into square so that we're not fighting geometry trying to get them in. These ones are a little more simple. There's not a whole lot of uh, mess around with these. We have a center line that we're going to, and our opening is good. Someone planned it or something. Like somebody planned it. Like somebody planned it. All right, so we need to go that way a quarter inch. Okay, here we go. All right, so we want to slide this way. To check our height. This corner is where it needs to be, but that one's yep. that's not super low. All right, so do this. Me measure off my, our center line. See how it should be pretty close. We're probably within an eighth now. Bring down on the floor. <laughs> Thank you. On, on the ground. <laughs> that's two and a two and a quarter. So we got to come back uh, about a quarter inch. A quarter inch too far right now. Right there is where it. Okay, tack that top corner then. Level's really good. All right, let's check our square. That'll change, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Fire 16. I feel like I've lived this before. This one's probably 3 16. Yeah, just like before. So this, which way is this one? This is the long one. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we're gonna <laughs> rack the window into square and then kind of go from there. Now that it's kind of in the right spot. Yeah. Right there? Yep. Square. Okay. Are we level across? Yeah. And we're even? Uh, I don't know about that one. That would be asking a bit much. Um, this one is high by about the thickness of this material here. 16th ish? How about now? That's pretty good. All right. The nice thing about this ICF foundation is we can screw directly to it, almost like it's wood. So inside of this cap piece, which we slid in when we made the opening, that capped the end of the cavity where, this, where the concrete was, there are plastic webs, and you can grab those pieces of plastic with your fasteners. The only little caveat or detail here is you need a screw with a pretty coarse threads to actually grab that uh, piece of plastic and not strip out. not too bad. So today, the two windows for the bump out in the dining room, and then the two windows for the office down there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And before we wrap things up for this episode, here's a look. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is, that's an incredible difference. Here's a look at the, the, uh, the office now that there's actually some windows in here. The amount of light and the amount that this makes the room feel bigger, I cannot even put into words. <laughs> it's, it's such, it's, it's so odd. This, this is great. Yeah, this is, this is, this is wonderful. Oh, that's a lot clearer. So we'll add a little more structure in here between the two windows and then that's going to be about it for the install of the windows down here until it comes time to uh, sheetrock and then trim. And then up here, this is what the finished roof deck looks like. So you can see they came back and all the seams have been welded and basically melted and fused together to create a seamless, uh, like sh almost like a shower pan up here. And you can see they got up the walls on all sides up and over the parapet so it's like a big like shower pan up here and then all of our our pitches send the water out to the uh, collection boxes and allows the water to drain down and out of there so this is uh <laughs> this is an absolutely incredible space as you can see we've uh, kind of moved in up here and started to enjoy the space so the original plan for this uh this roof was to just install it like this but not use it and just have it be a, uh, a roof for now. And then when we do the, the second story, we would do the door and do all the railings and actually convert this into an actual usable space. But uh, <laughs> we've fallen in love with it so much already 
and we don't really want to wait so we're going to do the railing install uh, as part of this phase so we're basically moving that from the future to now so once we get the uh, the exterior all trimmed out we can then uh, do the railing and then in the future we'll have a door that goes here to actually get out here a little bit easier but it's uh this is an absolutely fantastic place to hang out and just uh watch whatever critters happen to wander through that field in the evening so at least for now until the uh the railing system is installed this is an adults only uh area which is uh, kind of nice in a sense because in the evenings once the kids are asleep uh lindsay and i can come out here and just relax and hang out and especially now that it's becoming a little bit nicer out in summertime we can actually watch you know the sun go down and it's 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 a very nice and beautiful and uh, pleasant space so that is the roof on here so that means that next time we can start doing some real stuff and start converting the space beneath me into something so next time we're going to do the the door install we got all those four windows installed this time the door installed and we have those other eight windows to install as well so we're going to be working down in the sunroom for the next few episodes but this is uh this, this has turned out absolutely amazingly i we like outdoor spaces and this is uh this is a fantastic outdoor space so that's going to do it for this one thank you as always for watching we greatly appreciate it if you have any questions or comments on the home addition renovation remodel whatever it is we're calling it thingy please feel free to leave us a comment as always we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have and until next time <laughs> happy working